Oh, here we are. I'm here at the Holderness coastline and over the course of the next few videos I'm going to be looking at coastal processes impacting the UK landscape. Whilst we're doing this we're going to have a look at a range of coastlines starting here along the Holderness coastline moving towards Norfolk and potentially some other coastal areas of the UK. I wanted to start by considering some of the key thoughts with coastal landscapes. When we're looking here you can see obviously very much geology is impacting this whole area. The geology of this coastal environment is fundamentally key. We've got here very soft rock, soft sedimentary rock, boulder clay that's known as being unconsolidated. What that means is it's not bound together by cement. So if you imagine thousands, millions of years ago when you've got the sea crustaceans that died, they start to create at the bottom of our seabeds different layers, strata of sedimentary rock. If you're looking here at this, this cliff we can see in the background, you can actually see these layers, strata of rock. At A level, we can see and call that horizontal dip, where the rock strata is running horizontally to the coastline. But what's important is obviously the sea. And we can see here the waves will come in and they will cause erosion of this coastline. Now, the four types of erosion to remember. Firstly, hydraulic action. The strength of the water going into a crack, creating a mini explosion and creating the, rack to, the crack sorry, to break apart. The second, abrasion. When the, the sea, the waves are transporting sediment, massive rocks, boulders, they throw them at the cliffs like the ones we see behind us, eroding it, known as the sandpaper effect. The next one, attrition. Rocks smashing against each other, creating smaller, more rounded rocks that you will notice when you go to a beach usually. Now, when you actually stood at a pebble beach, maybe Brighton as an example, you might hear, if you hear the waves crashing, the, the sound of rocks smashing against each other. And that is attrition. And the last one, which is very important when we're looking at coastlines that have sedimentary rock, is solution. When the chemicals in the sea will erode through chemical reactions, the cliffs like the ones we can see behind us. So when we're looking at this, we've got erosional processes that will affect coastlines such as this. But something you must also consider is the type of wave that will impact coastline. You have two types of wave. You have constructive waves and you have de uh, destructive waves. A constructive wave is a wave that will create a beach. That's not the sort of wave that we experience here along the Holderness coastline. Okay, but when you have a constructive wave, you have a very strong swash. So the swash comes in, it'll come up the beach and it'll create a beach and it has a very, beak, a very weak backwash. So it doesn't have the energy or the strength to take sediment away. So it creates a very flat and wide beach. You don't get much happening here along the Holderness coastline. What you have happening here are destructive waves. Now these waves have an immensely strong, uh, sorry, have a very weak swash, but a very strong backwash. So they take sediment away. So if we look down here, we can notice that we don't really have a beach, okay? We have very much rocks that have fallen through process of mass movement that we'll come on to later, and not very much a beach as the sediment would have been taken away. Now, another factor you must consider is the direction of the prevailing wind. Now, coastlines like this on the Holderness coastline get eroded a huge amount every year, up to two metres of recession rates a year. That's one of the highest in Europe. Something that we must consider is the direction, though, of the prevailing wind and something called longshore drift. If you imagine the direction of the prevailing wind, which at the moment is in this direction, will come in towards me here. As it comes in, it will then swash, go up the beach, and then go back out at 90 degrees. As it does that, it will take sediment with it. And this process will continue all the way along the coastline. And as it does this, it will transport sediment along the coastline. And as you move further towards Scarborough and onwards towards the Holdness, sorry, onwards towards Hornsey and Mappleton, you'll see management in play to try and reduce these impacts of coastal erosion from longshore drift. So, obviously, it's a nice start to this, uh, to this section of videos. We can see here this whole coastal area massively Im impacted by process erosion, process of longshore drift, destructive waves, and we're going to look at the type of landforms and the other factors that will lead to creating such distinctive coastal landscapes. 
some wonderful geography in action.